Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're for us. Thank you, Jesus, that you love us and that you're giving us your continued favor. Even, Father, when we do not deserve it, your favor is there. You're for us, Lord rooting for us, Lord, to be successful, to be well, to be okay, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for that encouraging word this morning. In the midst of everything, Lord, thank you for encouraging us, Lord Jesus. Father God, I pray for, for Sister Bobby's legs, Lord, that you would heal her, for Debbie's legs. I pray for Sister Connie and the procedure that she's getting ready to go through, Lord, and that you would heal her of the infection, Lord. I pray, Lord, for Jeff Owen, who's battling with cancer, Lord, that you'd continue, Lord, to, to give him healing grace, Lord Jesus. I pray for Margaret and Geraldine, Lord, that you'd touch their bodies and heal them today. I pray for John, I pray, Lord Jesus, for Dave's continued recovery, Lord Jesus. The pastor that needs healing of cancer, Lord. For Sister Mary who needs your healing, Lord. For less, Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus, right now. For all those that are traveling during this holiday season, Lord. That you give them traveling safety and mercy along the way. Father, be gracious unto your people, Lord Jesus. And 
for those, Lord, that are outside of the kingdom, Lord, let someone reach out. Let someone touch them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let someone touch them. And draw them to you, Lord Jesus. And may they find their way back home. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for joining us. We praise God that... Uh, You've taken the, the time to tune in, to join our live broadcast here. And maybe you're seeing it at a different time. We still know that God has no distance in time or space. And so we welcome you. We encourage you to like and to share. Help us get the word out. Help us reach out to other people. Comment so that we know you're there. You can just say hi. You can just say bless you. Just type something in. If you have a prayer request, you can type that in. If you don't want to put it on the prayer request for everyone to see, you can send that to me in a message. We want to join you in prayer for whatever need you have, that God will meet it and he will deliver you. Also want to take the opportunity to thank those that give. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for each week going through whatever process, some people sending it through the mail, some people sending it uh, through the electronic banks and, and different things that are offered. Thank you. And if you haven't given yet, or you haven't had an opportunity to give, we encourage you, when, when you are able, please take, take the opportunity to give through one of these means and help support the work of New Life Foursquare Church. We appreciate you. Pray with us about uh, what I heard the other day. Someone sent me a message and said that they're praying about painting our steeple as a donation. So please pray with me that God will bring that to pass. Uh, that would be a tremendous blessing. I drove uh, the other day uh, through Madison. <clears throat> Debbie was there getting a little bit of pampering care. Uh, and uh, while I was driving through Madison, I always like to look at the churches. And the first thing I noticed on every one of the churches, at least uh, two thirds, maybe even a higher number, all of the steeples needed painting. And it just really, it tugged at my heart. Those steeples are, are kind of like uh, things that draw people to the kingdom of God or draw people to that fellowship. And there, sometimes uh, there's not enough money or sometimes there's other reasons for why they're not painted. Would you join me in prayer that not only would God supply the needs, but that God would supply the people that would help get those steeples painted. Spruce up the house of God. Fix it up. Make it look nice. If you'll join me in the word this morning. I'm going to the first book of Corinthians, the ninth chapter. Somebody might say, well, is he ever going to get through Corinthians? Well, I believe I'll get through it pretty quickly here soon. Uh, but once I preach through Acts the entire year, so, you know, keep joining me. Somebody might say, well, Pastor, why are you doing this? Why do you go through these books? Well, one of the things that, that, that I've noticed is that there's a lot of, of people who are ignorant about God's Word. That doesn't mean they don't read it. There are people that read through the Bible all the time. They might uh, have a daily exercise of reading. 
a yearly exercise of reading. But when you sit down and talk to them about specific things, they don't have any understanding of those specific things, even though the Bible probably has already talked about those things. And so the Word of God by itself says that it is understood by here a little, there a little, line upon line, word upon word, precept upon precept. So we understand God's word when we look at the whole picture under a microscope and try to come to terms with what it really is saying. The Bible even says, how shall they understand without a preacher? And so those that have been called to minister and those that have been called to help clarify the word of God, we pray that God will anoint them today, that they'll be able to help clarify God's word. Now, if you want to get the rest of chapter 9, it's in our Wednesday night meeting. I talked about verses 1 down to, let's see, uh, 16, I believe. And so today I'm going to start at verse 17, or the ending of 16, excuse me. It says, let me go back and read the whole thing, verse 16. Yet preaching the good news is not something I can boast about. I am compelled by God to do it. How terrible for me if I didn't preach the good news. If I were doing this on my own initiative, I would deserve payment. But I have no choice, for God has given me this sacred trust. What then is my pay? It is the opportunity to preach the good news without charging anyone. That's why I never, never demand my rights when I preach the good news. Apparently, there were in the Corinthian church some people that were resentful of any money that was being given to those that were preaching the gospel. And Paul wanted to make two things clear. First of all, he's preaching the gospel because he's compelled to do it by God, and he's not doing it by money. But if you were with, if you go back and, and, and watch the part on Wednesday night from verse 1 to verse 16, Paul tells us that we have a responsibility to take care of those that do preach the gospel to us. That we have an obligation. That since they sowed into our life, we have an obligation to give back. Since they sowed spiritual things, we have an obligation to give material things. You cannot think in terms of, I'm not connected. This is one of the things that we really need to realize right now. Even though we're not as connected as maybe we were before COVID, whether we're in the same building or not, whether we meet together in different venues or different ways, we are still interconnected by God's Spirit. And that requires us to act and have a certain attitude and a certain demeanor in a certain way. And one of those is, is that we make sure that those that bring the gospel to us, those that preach the gospel to us, are not in need, that they're, they're taken care of. You know, earlier in this year, we prayed, <coughs> excuse me, that, that God would help our Cambodian mi mi missionary to have rain. And I want to tell you, thank God, that prayer was answered, they got rain. But then they got flood. <laughs> so we had to pray that God would stop the rain. Well, the harvest is almost in, and last night he posted <clears throat> that because of all the other issues that they've had to go through, the things that they didn't plan for, they had to plan, I, I think in one field they even had to go back and plant another crop because the first crop did not get enough rain. So they had to do other things, and because of all that, now they're, they're asking God for enough money to pay for the diesel fuel to harvest it. So there's a whole harvest sitting there. Can you imagine? You have enough food to feed 
literally thousands of people, but you don't have the money to get it in. You don't have the ability to go out and harvest it. So pray with us and pray with, pray with us as we pray for our Cambodian brothers that they would have enough uh, fuel, enough labor, that that entire harvest would be brought in. We, we just speak that in Jesus' name, that God would supply the need, that harvest would come in. Paul goes on in 19 and says, Even though I am a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who follow the Jewish law, I lived under the law, even though I am not subject to the law. I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. When I'm with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from the law so I can bring them to Christ. But I don't ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. Now what Paul is saying here is, in, in another translation, it says, he, I became all things to all men. Paul was the kind of a person that tried to find a way to reach people that thought differently, that acted differently, that had even different beliefs. And let me tell you something, that sometimes can be hard. But he goes on at the end of this and he says, I obey the law of Christ. <coughs> if you were asked what the law of Christ is, what would you say? The Bible clearly tells us the law of Christ is love that it, it surpasses everything. You know, sometimes when we tell people about their sin, they think we don't love them. They think we don't care about them, when in reality, we love them very much. That's why we don't want them to stay in the burning building. Amen. We love them a lot. That's why we don't want them to go down with the ship. We want to pull them out of the burning building. We want to save them from the sinking ship. We want to bring them to the kingdom of God because we love them, because we care about them. But there are times when we have to be gentle in the way we share it. We have to be sensitive in the way we share it. I've seen some street preachers, and I'm not being critical of them, but when you have people that are deep in sin, and you bark at them through a megaphone and you tell them, you all are going to hell. You're going to split hell wide open. I don't think they hear the next sentence. They just turn you off and ignore you. If you watch Jesus and the way Jesus ministered to those that were lost, he comes along and he sees Zacchaeus sitting up in the tree and Zacchaeus is probably the worst sinner in that town. And isn't it wonderful that Jesus picks him out? Jesus goes for the worst one. And he doesn't holler up at him and say, Zacchaeus, are you going to hell? He says, Zacchaeus, how about having a cup of tea with me? Come on down, Zacchaeus. Let's, let's go have a meal together. Let's fellowship. Let's have some relationship. You see, when you get to know somebody, when you get to spend time with somebody, even if they tell you something harsh, you might listen because you feel the love from them. If all we're doing is making people feel what they already know to be true, you know, sinners don't really need to be told they're going to hell. They already know that. They're denying it. They're ignoring it, but they know it. Even those that don't believe fear that maybe there is a God. <laughs> and they might have to someday stand before him. And, they, and they're just hoping that there ain't. But when you reach out to people, and when you spend the time to try and 
hear their problems and hear their pains and hear their, their troubles, then you can speak into their life. Then you can speak something good. Then you can speak something positive. Verse 22, Paul goes on and says, When I am with those that weak, I share their weakness. For I want to bring the weak to Christ. In other words, Paul is sensitive. He's sympathetic. He's got that vibration from the tuning fork. He's in agreement with them. I try to find common ground with everyone, he says. Doing everything I can to save some. Notice some. He knows that everyone's not going to be saved. He knows that everyone's not even going to listen. Even if he did, does all these things, some people will still reject it. But he's going the second mile. He's going that extra, extra little bit to, to show love. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. Don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. Run to win. <clears throat> All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win the prize that will fade away. If you won the Olympics in ancient time, you didn't get a, a, a bronze or a gold or a silver medal. You didn't get a medal. You got a little leaf that went around your head. <laughs> and by the end of the day, it had already faded away. Why? Because they wanted you to understand that for this moment, you're a winner. But later, you're going to be a human again. <laughs> and things fade away. Things don't last, especially in this earth. He said, but we, those of us that are working for the kingdom, do it for an eternal prize. We're going to get a reward that never fades away, that will endure for all eternity. He said, so I run with purpose every step. Do you think about your steps? Do you think about, okay, this decision that I'm going to make, it's going to lead me in that direction. Is it a purposeful step? Is it a step that I should take? Do you think about your steps that way? How will that, how will that step affect the eternal prize? Will it be in accordance with God's word and God's kingdom. He says, I'm not just shadow boxing. The word there for shadow boxing in the Greek means I'm not just beating the air. But I'm aiming at a target. I'm attempting to hit it. I'm attempting to carry it through. And this is the part that I want to leave you with this morning. Well, there's two parts, but this is one of them. He says, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should do. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I might be disqualified. Paul says we must, as Christians, work hard at learning how to be disciplined. I told someone yesterday in my conversation with them, work on your self-discipline. Is it hard? Yes. Yes, it is. It is hard to be disciplined. It is difficult to learn discipline. It's difficult to practice discipline. But as you and I practice it, we get better at it. As you and I work towards being disciplined, we get better at it. If you just look around you right now in this world, you can trace most of the problems that, we're that we are dealing with in this world. You can trace most of them back to the, to the lack of any kind of self-discipline. 
men and women that live today that are in our world, in our society, they don't necessarily practice self-discipline. They practice doing it their own way, having their own way, getting what they want and getting it now. A few weeks ago, I was in, in line to get some food for my grandchildren. And uh, I just let a little statement come out of my mouth. The line is a little long today. And when I did, I noticed that my grandchild said something which showed even more frustration. In other words, he was following my lead. Being more frustrated with the line. Being more frustrated with the fact that we were having to wait. And I wanted to show him a better example than the one I had just shown. So I looked over at him and said, you know what, even though it's taking a little while, that's not really a big deal. Because we get to talk to each other. We get to spend a little extra time with each other. We get to enjoy the blessings of God. And we can pray for the people that might be in front or behind us. You know, when you have a different response, a self-disciplined response, it brings glory to God and it blesses others. The whole thing here that Paul is trying to tell us is to learn to be kind. Learn to be kind. Learn to be disciplined. And learn to love others, especially those that really get on your nerves. <laughs> Learn to love them. Ask God for more grace. Ask him to show you how to live in the grace that you already have. And not only will you bless others, but in the end you will be blessed too. So be kind and love one another. Would you pray with me? Thank you, Lord Jesus for all of your many blessings, for your favor, for your love, for your, for your desire for our best. May we today go forth in our lives. Even if we might be at home, help us to find a way, Lord, to be generous and to be kind and to be loving to others. Help us to find a way to share the gospel. Maybe the only thing we can do today to share the gospel it's just to share this message on our Facebook page. Lord, however we can do something that reaches others, may we have the strength and the courage to do it. And we know you'll bless it, Lord. We know that you'll lead us and lead our steps, Lord. And so we commit ourselves to you. Like Paul said, we're a slave to the gospel. May we be a slave to it today. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray you have a blessed week. Take care and God bless you. Bye.